All right, the 2020 NFL Draft, all complete. I got a, a beat writer's roundtable. It looks like Hollywood Squares. Let's start with uh, down below, Jason Hershort, Sports Illustrated, Joe Reedy, Associated Press, Daniel Popper, The Athletic, Haley Elwood, Chargers.com. Guys, welcome. Uh, the Chargers got better today. Um, four players, and I sense the theme, uh, uh, leadership, guys who uh, were really impactful uh, with their college programs. Jason, we'll start with you. What would you think? Well, I mean, obviously you can't discuss the Chargers draft without talking about what they did on Thursday night. I mean, the quarterback was always something that was going to be on the table so long as, you know, one of the top guys was available that they liked, but that they came back in, added a linebacker. I mean, Tom Telesco has not really traded up much in the first round during his time as general manager. So to see that kind of change in his behavior, I think really informs what they expect of the season. That they feel like they can really win now with the right additions in the draft. We figured it was going to be mostly offense and not a lot of defense this year. And it, it, and it basically flipped a script from last year. I think the number of skill players surprised me a little bit, especially with two wide receivers. As one who has uh, seen UCLA football the past two years, very happy that they were able to get Joshua Kelly. I think he was a guy at the end of last season. We were, you know, maybe thinking a late round pick and hoping that Josh would get drafted. Popper, the offense, you're getting weapons that could probably make an impact this upcoming year. But also, when you think about Justin Herbert, maybe a few years down the line, uh, these are guys that can kind of grow together. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the one, the one thread through all of the picks is speed. And every single one of these players has speed in the first five rounds, including Kenneth Murray, the linebacker they chose who ran a four five two at 241 pounds, um, you know, and, and it's all geared towards beating the chiefs. They're the best team in the league. They're the fastest team in the league. They proved this past season that you have to be fast to win in the NFL right now on both sides of the ball. And then KJ Hill was a steal. I mean, everyone I looked at had this guy as a third round pick, maybe a fourth round pick at worst, pick him up in the seventh round. Um, and it gives you flexibility here. Keenan Allen is on the last year of his contract. KJ Hill is, is, is in that mold as a route technician kind of slot guy. It gives you options. You know, it gives you options to, to move, potentially move on for Keenan Allen. I'm not saying that's, half, that's going to happen, but you want those kinds of options the same way that Chen Nguyen Wosu gives you the option to, to move on from Melvin Ingram. Um, I thought it was a great draft all around um, outside of not drafting an offensive lineman. Haley, I joked with Coach Lynn. I asked him if he was the head coach of the L.A. Chargers or the, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Yeah after today it's it's a lock that a member of Notre Dame is going to be on this roster every single season I think and a defender at that right but overall I think when you look at rookies in general you kind of forget the stress that comes with leaving one spot and having to pick up and move to a brand new place well this guy is coming west but he already has that sort of built-in bond with guys on this team drew drenkel has been tweeting all afternoon how stoked he is so that familiarity it helps you i mean look drew and jerry went through it together last year and they both had connections with isaac and whatnot so to have those bonds again it's just so helpful or i guess i should say i imagine it's so helpful as a rookie and there's clearly something about what these guys did in college and what they're able to do at the next level, that is really impressive to this front office staff because, like you said, we are now, you know, two or three, excuse me, in the last two years. And then you add Isaac a couple of years ago for Notre Dame Golden Domers right there. All right, guys, let's go around the horn to close this out. Your, your, your parting shot, your, your final thoughts on, on the 2020 NFL draft. Joe Reedy, we'll start with you. I think overall, for having only six picks, Chargers addressed their needs, did well. I also think the other good thing is that there's not pressure on Justin Herbert to come in day one and be the franchise quarterback because nobody knows Tyrod Taylor's strengths and weaknesses better in this league than Anthony Lynn. And I think Anthony's going to get the most out of Tyrod, but if Justin has a great training camp and, and supplants him, so be it. But at least there's no pressure to come in day one and be the man. I think I have to say, I love, actually, you brought this up, just the leadership that a lot of these young guys have. And, and Tom told me the other day, look, it's very hard when you're young and when you're a rookie to kind of come in and, and sort of assume that position. But what these guys did for their programs in college, they've earned leadership, they've had leadership, and they can definitely grow 
and build on that throughout their time with the Chargers. Now, one thing I'm interested, though, is just kind of where we go from here once we sort of, you know, put a bow on this after this weekend and then go back to off virtual offseason programs and then how those rookies get integrated in. I think it's going to be really interesting, something that's interesting to follow, and then always just what's going to happen over these next couple months just in general. The first pick the Chargers made was very obviously about the future. Anytime you take a quarterback in the top 10, it's about the future. But everything else that Tom Telesco and the Chargers did was about winning right now. And if that's a team that's better than they performed last year, and they added a lot of pieces that contribute to the team right away, that even in a position where, you know, they're in the same division as the Kansas City Chiefs, there are just a lot of talented teams at the very top of the AFC. They have the opportunity to not just get back into the playoffs, but maybe be more than just a playoff appearing team if things go reasonably well in 2020. Overall, this was a really good draft. And for the first time in Tom Telesco's tenure as general manager, they will have a very talented quarterback on a rookie deal, which is what you're always looking for. And that's what this draft ultimately will be remembered for. And that's the defining thing of this draft. I still feel like they have to add a tackle. That's when I, when, that's my, my number one thing coming away from this draft is that they have to address that position still. I don't think they have enough there. And I think that at some point next season, if they don't address it, it's going to come back and bite them. Well, we'll see. We hope that we get these guys on the field very soon so we can have these conversations in open air at Jack Hammett Sports Complex. and, and Six maybe feet apart. Before that. Six feet apart, though. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. Hey, I know it's been a, a long day, a long weekend. Um, Popper, you did this. You did double duty for us this weekend. We appreciate it. Jason, Joe, always appreciate your contributions. And Haley, Get some rest. It's you been a long well. weekend. <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. What's happening, Chargers fans? If you guys want to see some more, click right here. Check it out. It's pretty simple. Right here. Check it out. <laughs>